Hi, my name is Amy Mozzie and I'm with Centurion Boats and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a brand new model we have coming out for 2021. This is the RI245. It's made by Centurion, which we all know is the evolution of the wake boat. But this new RI takes things a bit further. We'd classify this as a revolution. A revolution innovated. This is going into a battle with not only something that performs at that upper echelon, that big classification, but it also has these refinements built into it and functionality that gives everyone that's out there on the water what they want, when they want it. This is the RI245. It is revolution innovated. Let's check it out. What really makes the evolution of the wake boat starts at the waterline, and that's with our Opti-V hull. And just like the other 2021 models this year, we have the 245 that shares that running surface. It's got an Opti-V hull underneath it. I would say it's been improved slightly. There's a little bit more hook built into this boat, which means you need less of that center wake plate to change the running attitude of the boat. Uh, you've also got that same deep V, it's about a 30 degree V under the bow. It's really aggressive and allows that boat to cut through the choppy water or back over your own rollers if you're surfing. But also that deep V allows you to displace more water with less weight, which is what makes all of the water or the momentum behind our surf wave. It also, because of the balance that's built into the hull, because of those triangular pads, the flat pads on the rear corners of the boat, allows for a very symmetrical wakeboard wake. The hull is what's actually creating the wave. It's creating the displacement. The shape of the hull is really creating the shape of the wave. However, it can be altered with the Quick Surf Pro plates. The plate goes down opposite the surf side, digging the surf corner, displacing more water on the surf side and creating that wave. We can also transfer from one side to the other, from regular to goofy, in about 1.8 seconds because of the high speed rams that actuate these plates. So another system that can affect the shape of your surf wave or your wakeboard wake for that matter, it also changes the running attitude of the boat, is the silent stinger wake plate. What this does, as far as the plate is concerned, is change the wetted surface of the hull. So it changes what part of the hull is touching the water and in what way, which in turn can change your running attitude, which is how far your bow is in the air or down towards the water. It can also change the shape of your wake. It can give it a little bit of a lip when you need it, none when you don't. It can also change the shape of the surf wave on either side based on what position it's in. And it has a hundred points of adjustment. But the really special thing is the silent portion of this plate. The silent stinger has three patents on it, two utility patents and a design patent. These patents are really the, the power behind this system because what it does is it takes down the engine noise for the passengers on the inside of the boat, it makes it quieter. And it does that with a series of baffles that are built inside the plate. There is forced water that comes through these ports. So as the boat is underway, it pushes water into those ports. That water tumbles through a series of baffles with the exhaust that's also ported into the plate. Then the water comes out through these larger tubes at the back. What this does is it allows the plate to dissipate any interruption or disturbance in the water that could end up in your surf wave and affect the way that you're riding. But the main benefit is the quietness. This really takes down the engine noise, especially for those on the inside of the boat. So one of the most distinct characteristics about the new RI245 has got to be the nose of the boat. I mean, it looks so cool. It's got the Centurion badging up front, but the cool part, and unfortunately we can't really show it to you right now, but it lights up. And it's not the only thing that lights up on the front of the boat. You also have standard Baja Racing docking lights. Now these things are literally brilliant. They are 
Each light is 2,400 ANSI lumens a piece, which means there's 4,800 lumens per side. And these things can light up a dock like nobody's business. But they're made to look stylish. They're built into the design of the boat. Our engineers wanted it to be functional and beautiful at the same time. And boy, they nailed it with the front end of this RI245. So another distinct styling characteristic of the RI245 has to be these billet vents that you see um, pretty much decorating the whole exterior of the boat. Now this is going to be something that is unique to this model, the RI245. These particular vents are made by PTM. They are billet but also anodized so they will hold up in the elements but they also look really cool. This two-tone element to me just finishes off the look of the boat. But the other piece that I absolutely love is this ram fill lights up. So once I step on to the back of the boat, to the swim step, you notice that this swim step is really cool in and of itself. It's got handles tooled into it. It allows you to get up on the swim step even when it's in the water but not fully weighted in the back. That's key for me. Um, I need to look graceful getting back into the boat and sometimes that doesn't always happen if you don't have somewhere to grab. The great thing about the RI245 swim step is you've got that. So I can get onto the swim step easily. Then once I'm up here, if I need to put something away, I've got access to this big beautiful trunk. So I can throw my shoes in. It also has a ballast bag back here. It's an optional bag. Most people get that and it helps to shape your wave or wake uh, just right. Gets all that weight all as far back as you possibly can, which is nice. But another piece of the design that I really appreciate is the way that the trunk does not extend um, all the way to either gunnel. So what I mean by that is I've got these little pads. So there's one on either side of the trunk. And what that gives me is stepability, essentially. I can step past the trunk even when it's up like this. This is nice because if you're loading or unloading gear from the back, I don't have to wait for that to be done to get in the boat. And you'll find this with if you're stopped swimming and people are getting in and out and they're still putting some vests away or whatever it happens to be, people can still file around them and make it into the boat really easily. I appreciate that piece of the design and it really comes from our engineers. They use these boats with their families and they find out those little neat innovations that may not seem like a lot on paper, but man, they make a difference when you're at the lake on the water. I really like that. And then, probably the piece de resistance, my favorite thing, okay? And I promise, I'm gonna stop saying my favorite pretty soon, but these seats have to be my absolute favorite. So, while you're not gonna be in these seats while the boat is underway, if you're stopped hanging out, swimming, this is a perfect spot to sit. They are so nice, so much fun, so easy to use, and they're comfortable. All I have to do, pull it towards me, it drops back down and it turns back magically into a sun pad. Like I said, once again, another spot on this boat I really love, the back, the sun pad. So as I step into the boat, in the RI245, I know exactly what path I'm taking. I'm gonna go over the walkover and I can step down onto the seat and we have this new fiberglass piece with gator step that allows you not to be stepping on your cushion itself but to step on a hard part. Uh, I know a lot of people they would either like to wear their shoes onto the interior of the boat and not worry about stepping on the upholstery or they just don't want to have people stepping on their upholstery repeatedly. A lot of customers are used to an older boat that may not have as good of quality of vinyl or foam built into the interior. So in order to be conscientious, they want to have somewhere to step that is not stepping on their cushion. And that's what the RI245 gives you. But since we're talking about the interior, this particular interior, along with all of the Centurions, is extremely resilient. So if you do want to step on it, even with your shoes, I know it's taboo, you can. This interior is gonna hold up 
The vinyl that we use is Spradling vinyl. It has a 17 mil top coat. What that means is a top coat is literally a coating over the top of the vinyl. And it is 17 mils thick, which is 17 thousandths of an inch thick. It's not something that you could see with your, your naked eye necessarily, but it sure offers a lot of protection. It guards against the UV light. It guards against staining, abrasions, maybe from a sharp fin on your surfboard. It is extremely resilient. It's also soft to the touch. You'll see in this interior, the texture on these seats is our hex grain pattern. And that texture allows this particular vinyl to dissipate heat faster because it has more surface area. That's another benefit of this particular vinyl. You've also got the thread that's holding it all together. You'll notice that you see a lot of French seams on this interior. A French seam is a seam that's sewn three times. You'll also see a lot of half stitches. Half stitches are sewn twice. What you won't find on this interior is a single stitch. In other words, one seam all by itself because we tend to build an interior that is made for the rigors of boat use, which means we want people to be able to step on it, sit on it, set things on it, and not be harmed and not pull apart. And those seams and that extra time it takes to sew them is what causes that to be true, that this interior is extremely durable. And that Gore Tenera thread that it's sewn with the thread itself is durable. It resists acid rain and UV light, harsh chemicals. It's not gonna deteriorate with the normal use of a boat. And I think that's part of the power behind what you see on a Centurion interior is it's beautiful, it's comfortable, but man, it lasts a long time. So when our designers and engineers are um, concepting a new model, I'd like to say that they think of everything. And while they may not think of absolutely everything, they think of the things that we use or need every day, um, but maybe don't have the, the presence of mind to understand, you know, what it is that we really need. They put it into practice. They're like, this is it. This is gonna make life easier. This is gonna make life better. And it may not seem like a big thing, but the top deck on the RI245 is a lot wider. The gunnel is a lot wider um, than other models of boats that you'll see. And this isn't just to make this boat appear to be bigger in stature. This is so that you can easily board the boat from the dock. Um, you can step out of the interior onto a nice wide flat surface. It's also a really good spot for some cool looking gator step, um, the non-skid that we use. But uh, this is one of those little refinements, I would call it, that is so functional and probably gets overlooked in a lot of other boats um, if it's there at all. So you may have already noticed the cool looking gator step or the non-skid that's all over this boat. Um, there's no better place to really see it than on the inside. Uh, the flooring is new for us this year and this particular scheme is called the Warrior Cut. And this is a three layer gator step. So there are literally three layers of non-skid in this boat and they can be custom colored each layer. So there are 15 different gator step colors I can choose from for the bottom layer, for the middle and for the top. And the extra special piece of this particular flooring scheme is the laser cut. You can do a special laser etch into the top of the top layer of your gator step. So this one has what we call a camo, uh, digital camo etch into it. And you can see it, there's some darker portions on that top layer and that's literally cut in with the laser. Extremely precise, but it gives it just another custom element. You can choose that camo texture, you can choose wood grain, or you can choose a, what we call Tetris, which is like a series of cubes um, throughout your interior. But this gator step, not only is it cushy, does it feel good on your feet because there's three layers to it, it's so customizable. I could have made this red, white, and blue on the interior. I could have made it um, blue and green if I wanted to. I mean, the possibilities are endless. 
But that's another thing to keep in mind, that Centurion is a custom boat manufacturer. We build the boat the way you want it, and that's just another level of customization that we thought was so much fun and such a big deal to offer this year, and it is available in the RI245. In the 2021 RI245, there's never any one that's too far away from a cup holder. As you can see, these side panels in this boat, it's 24 and a half feet long, and the side panels seem to be almost as long as the boat. And they've got just as many cup holders as we could possibly fit into it. They've got five on the driver's side, and then another couple by the trash can lid. Um, they've got another five on the passenger side. You're always close to refreshment in an RI245. But also, in the side panel, you've got a couple grab handles for safety, yet they look like they were made to go with this boat because they were. Uh, they match the exterior grab handles, and for lack of a better term, they're just cool looking. They're substantial. You've also got the new wet sound stereo system. This particular boat has what we call the Warrior sound system in it by wet sounds and you can see those special speakers there in the side panels perfect place for them and they're perfectly angled to funnel the best sound into the lounge where you need it but you've also got a backlit centurion emblem in this side panel and it's an etched glass emblem and it looks amazing goes with the look of the boat kind of in this daylight you can't see the centurion as much when you light it up at night that thing glows it's beautiful other thing you've got here in the lounge and under every seat is storage hinged seat storage and this year that hinged seat is also shockingly shocked so it has got a shock that holds it up so i can load uh, stuff underneath the seat not have to worry about holding the seat up at the same time and you'll find under every one of these seats you've got that same hinge that same shock uh, except for one of the seats up front here this one has a nice lean back built in so I've got another rear facing seat on this side it is hinged but hinged a little bit differently so that we can use it as a lean back another cool part of the interior believe it or not, and this could be just because I'm a mom, but is the trash can access. So I've got a couple different ways to keep this boat clean. I've got a trash can lid here. I can drop any kind of trash that the kids are leaving easily, quickly, get it out of the way, or I can access the trash can through here, load it in, out, change the bag, whatever I need to do. Um, but it's nice that everything has its place. I can keep it clean. It's one of my pet peeves in the boat. If we've got some garbage, it's going in the trash can. But that's another thing about Centurions in general, but specifically the RI245. I mentioned it earlier. Our engineers have families. Their families use the boat with them. They develop things that really work on the water, and that's why. The standard tower on the 2021 RI245 is the drop zone auto tower. Why is it called an auto tower? Well, it goes up and down with a button press. And we're gonna look at that here. And really it's simple to do. Um, all you have to do is unlock this handle on either side. And then once you see this warning or this white label here, that means it's ready to go down. And all you have to do is push this button here for to lower the tower, this arrow to raise the tower back up. It lowers in about 14 seconds and it raises up in about 17. It's really as simple as that. And that is probably the main functionality of this particular tower. But beyond that, it just looks cool. I mean, this tower is built with a special water drop shaped extrusion, which means it doesn't just have plain round tube that encircles the frame of the tower. It, it looks better, but it's also stronger. It's got this extra little ridge built into it that gives the tower more strength. And where you see that, or I should say hear that the most, is like on a rough day at the lake, um, even going down the road when the boat's on the trailer, you don't see it sway, you don't hear it rattle. It's an extremely stout tower. And like I said, it looks really cool. It goes with the look of the boat. 
You can also customize it. I can choose between any of my gel coat colors on these tower panels, and I can even add a second accent to the outside. So I can make this tower look like it was made to go with my boat because it was. It also has some really cool accessories. So this board rack here, we call the bombshell rack. It's a bombshell rack. It's made by Roswell. It's a big rack, but it has big, it's a big rack with purpose. It is made to accommodate a 26 inch wide surfboard. And this width of a surfboard, normally you have to put it, you have to stow it on top of the bimini or you have to have, have somewhere else in the boat where people are hitting toes or have the um, possibility of damaging it. Not anymore. You can put those big wide boards in these racks and they have a great cushy place to be stored. It's got special soft gator step that lines the inside of these forks so it keeps your boards safe. Those boards, we pay so much money for them anymore. A lot of them are custom designed. They have really cool custom graphics on it. We don't want to store them in a place where they could potentially be damaged. That's where the bombshell rack comes in. This rack allows you peace of mind when you're storing your board and easy access. It's a swivel rack. It's easy to get to and it's easy to stow. One of the other really impressive areas of the RI245 is the helm, specifically the driver's seat and dash. Uh, you've got a new dash system this year in the RI245, and we're calling it the Revo, the Revo side-by-side. -side. So it's a revolution. It absolutely is. I've got two side-by-side 12-inch -side screens, high-definition screens, and they are touchable and you can control every system in this boat from these two screens. Extremely graphical, easy to find out where everything is at and how it's controlled. It can also be customized. I can change the colors, I can go to my settings, I can go to user settings, and I can make sure that I've got everything just the way I want it. And that's really fun with this particular boat. I've got six different color choices. We're on purple right now which is um, how I'm feeling today. Um, hopefully the color of my aura, very happy. <laughs> but, uh, but I just love the way that this dash is so easy to see. And it doesn't obstruct my view of the water either. Now I'm not sitting on the bolster right now. So I'm in the Cobra driver's seat, not sitting on the bolster. I've still got a great view of the water in front of me when there is water. But the other thing we've got is all of the controls easily accessible on my right hand side. So I'm on the home screen right now. From here, I can actuate quick surf, I can actuate quick launch. Uh, quick surf we talked about earlier will move my surf wave from side to side. And I can activate that here just by clicking the quick surf button and it will go back to whatever side I happen to be surfing on previously. But if I want to go to my surf screen, this is the screen that will tell me what side I'm set up to surf on. Right now it's the left, where my plate positions are, both my center stinger wake plate and my surf tab. So I can see here, each of these tabs has a hundred points of adjustment on each, but this boat comes from the factory set up to surf. So if you're not into fine tuning your wave absolutely the way you want it and being really, really particular about it, and you just want to surf out of the box, you can straight from the factory, but you've got the ability to customize if you want to. I can surf right just by touching the surf right arrow. It also shows me visually which way the boat pitches slightly. And you can tell it's going to be creating the surf wave on the driver's side when I'm set up to surf right. It's going to be creating the surf wave on the passenger side when I'm set up to surf left. Now, I also want to be able to control my ballast. The ballast is also very graphical on this boat. This particular boat has seven different individually actuated ballast areas. So these are individually pumped in some cases or at least individually filled and drained ballast areas. I've got my bow ballast, which is really a U-shaped plug and play bag underneath the seat cushions in the bow. I've got a ballast that's a hard tank underneath the floor of the walkthrough to the bow. I've got two ram fill tanks, which are underneath the floor on either side of the lounge. Those tanks are filled with the ram fill, which allows it to fill in 90 seconds when you're underway. 
and they fill, they drain even faster, but they fill very quickly and that weight is evenly distributed throughout the lounge of the boat. Then I've got two rear plug and play bags on either side of the engine and then the bag we talked about earlier that is located in the trunk in the back of the boat. So the importance of this ballast location is the fact that it's evenly distributed throughout the boat. That's why the boat runs so level when your ballast is full. In a lot of competitors' boats, you'll find that about 75% of the ballast weight is behind the back seat, which makes the boat ride nose high, makes it difficult to see, it's not great for the fuel economy, but when you can get the boat evenly weighted front to back, you can ride more level in the water, you're displacing the entire running surface of the boat, the entire hull. That's what makes the wave so long and so customizable. That's something to keep in mind when you're looking at the ballast disbursement. It also changes the shape of your wave or your wakeboard wake for that matter because it changes the wetted surface of the boat itself. I've also got access to all my switches, um, my lighting. I've got docking lights, I've got tower lights, speaker lights, courtesy lights are the lights inside the, the um, side panels of the boat, underwater lights if you opt for that. But then, now we're getting to the good stuff, the stereo. New for this year, um, we're using the ICE stereo system from Murphy. And the ICE system is controlled through the touchscreen. So while our stereo system is all wet sounds components in this boat, uh, you can opt for the Roswell stereo system, which is Coverfire 2.0. This particular boat has the Warrior sound system by Wet Sounds. It is a customized stereo system that is installed at the factory. It has amazing sound, but because it has tons of speakers, tons of amps, I mean, in this boat alone, I have eight interior speakers. I've got four tens with horns on the tower firing back towards the rider. I've got two more eights firing down into the interior from the tower. Then I've got two 12 inch subwoofers mounted underneath the dash. So this boat is not lacking for sound capability. Probably one of my other second favorite things about this particular screen is going to be the fuel economy. So what do you say, what does the fuel economy have to do with this particular screen? Well, when I hit my trip button on the left hand Revo screen, I can see the amount of fuel I'm using for any given trip. So I can say, hey, I'm getting ready to go across the lake. It's maybe going to take me 15, 20 minutes. So I'm going to record that trip. I'm going to see how much fuel I use on that trip, how long it takes me, what is my um, gallons per hour on average, how many engine hours did I use in the process. This information is going to record and tell me next time I try to make that same trip, how much fuel do I need to do so. Now, this is one thing that we talk about quite a bit with Centurion in general is our fuel efficiency. Uh, our hull design allows this boat to run through the water more efficiently. It does not burn as much fuel because it's not creating as much resistance. It doesn't matter if you're weighted to surf, like we talked about earlier, you're weighted very evenly, you're not having an excessive bow rise and pushing water. You can hear it in the noise level of the engine that the engine's not stressing. You can see it in the RPM of the engine because typically you're at about a 2800 to a 3200 RPM even when you're fully loaded surfing. But what this particular function of the screen allows us to do is put our money where our mouth is. We're going to show you just how efficient these boats are and I know that seems like kind of an oxymoron that a surf boat that's built to displace water and tends to be heavier is going to be efficient as far as fuel, but uh, these really are. They save you more as far as the amount of money you're spending on fuel, but also they save you time. You don't have to head back to the dock every couple of hours when you've been surfing to get more fuel. You're out there, you're still surfing. You've got all day to use uh, well, normally a couple days to use a tank of fuel. This particular boat, the RI245, has an 89 gallon fuel tank. So that'll last you a good long three day weekend. That's if you're surfing all day long. 
And that's something that um, we decided this year as a company that we really wanted to show off in this new Revo Dash. You've also got a standard PTM cell phone holder and this cell phone holder charges. So you can charge your phone, have a great place for it. Visually it's nice because I can see it easily and still control if I choose to my song selection off my phone or off of the screen itself. The other piece of this that's really user friendly and may seem kind of silly and simple to you, but are your switches. I've got switches. It's easy for me to read which switch is what, and they're just push button switches. They light up when they're on, they uh, dim when they're off. Very easy to use. And it's accessible all right here from my Cobra racing seat, which is another one of my favorite things. It swivels. Um, I can participate in a conversation in the lounge or I can mind my own business and swivel back to the dash. Um, this area is built to be accommodating to the driver because in a lot of families, like in mine, there's normally one person that tends to drive most of the time and you gotta keep that person happy. And you know, in my family, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy and I'm normally the driver. So this is my domain here. And I love it. The RI245 is perfect for the way I drive a boat. And um, I think you'll think so too. When we're talking about the helm of the boat, I have to pay homage to the passenger side because the passenger is just as important, but the passenger side of the helm or the glove box call it is really cool in the RI245, as cool as glove boxes can be. This is also made by PTM and it lights up the centurion logo lights up and it gives the boat just that extra custom look and feel uh, you've got a couple cup holders there that are accessible by the passenger and i don't know, it just looks nice it finishes out the helm so nicely the style of it um, just goes along with the rest of the boat So another thoughtful refinement or element of the RI245 may not seem like much to most, but the windshield stanchions. Not only are they strong, they're big, they're beefy, they match the grab handles in the boat and they go with this style of boat so well, they kind of disappear, <laughs> they go so well. And uh, I think it's only fair to point them out because uh, that is one of those thoughtful little touches that our engineers just knocked out of the park once again. So yeah, as you would expect in a 24 and a half foot boat, the bow is a good size, super comfortable. We've got this uh, available remover bow filler cushion. You can make it into a lounge. It could be a playpen like it is now. You've also got a couple speakers up here for the tunes, a few cup holders as well. You've got great grab handles. Again, they match just about every other grab handle, uh, but they're also safe and, and easy to grab onto if you need to. Um, you can also exit from the bow. You know, a lot of our trailers have tongue ladders on them now and you can exit from the bow. And that's the reason for, for this little step here as I can step into the bow just like I did into the back of the boat without necessarily having to step on the upholstery, especially with shoes. But uh, it's another little thought. You've also got this nice flat wide area off the front of the bow so that you can get out of the bow um, as I like to say gracefully <laughs> and it's a it's a nice place to step but the bow of the 245 is just as impressive as the rest of the boat I really hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough I know it's a, a lot to take in there's a lot going on in this boat but go to your nearest Centurion Boats dealer and check out the 2021 RI245 you will not be disappointed. If anything, you're gonna experience this revolution innovated.